The Krebs cycle is something that I learned a lot repeatedly during my medical training, but never really understood. I think largely because the focus was always on learning all the different steps involved in it and not really understanding what it was about. I've tried to simplify it for this video because you only really need to understand a few things about aerobic respiration. So the first thing to remember is that this takes place in cell mitochondria. It is an aerobic process whereby oxygen is consumed and carbon dioxide and water are formed as waste products. And this is the main way in which cells go to produce the energy that they need to carry out all their daily functions. The main substrate is glucose, and this can come from various sources. But let's start by just looking at what happens to each glucose molecule. So one glucose molecule is metabolised to form two pyruvate molecules. This is then further processed and produces acetyl-coenzyme A. Now acetyl-coenzyme A is important because it's a cofactor in the Krebs cycle. What does the Krebs cycle actually do? So the Krebs cycle is sometimes also referred to as the tricarboxysilic acid cycle and it occurs in all cells which have mitochondria. It's the final common pathway for glucose, fatty acids and amino acids and it has various functions. It produces cofactors, it provides metabolic intermediaries for other pathways and it has a regulatory role in metabolism. But the really important thing as far as we're concerned is that it uses acetyl-coenzyme A as a cofactor for the cycle, which then produces ATP, which is the energy source for cells. So it really is that simple. Glucose is broken down to form pyruvate, and this happens in the cytoplasm of cells. Pyruvate then undergoes further metabolism and produces a cofactor, acetyl-coenzyme A. This enters the Krebs cycle, and ATP is produced, which powers cells. So you can see that acetyl-coenzyme A is an important factor in this. But the Krebs cycle is just the final stage of other energy sources in the body. We've looked at glucose already. The other sources are fat. So fats can be broken down. And if you remember from your earlier biology, fats, triglycerides in particular, are formed of three fatty acids and one glycerol molecule. Glycerol can be then metabolised in the liver to form glucose which then enters the cycle, as the normal glucose molecules did before it. Fatty acids undergo oxidation in the mitochondria of cells, and this releases acetyl-coenzyme A, which then takes part in the Krebs cycle. Proteins undergo a similar process. So when proteins are broken down, they form amino acids. Now these are formed of an amino group and a carbon skeleton. The carbon skeleton also produces acetyl-coenzyme A, as well as pyruvate and ketones. So both of these, acetyl-coenzyme A and the pyruvates, contribute to the Krebs cycle in cells. So as you can see, the Krebs cycle is the final common pathway for glucose, fats and proteins to contribute to the energy formation in cells, which is ATP. The Krebs cycle can only take place in cell mitochondria, but it is the way that energy is produced by cells to carry out all of their daily functions.